bought this place from a buddy of mine, okay? I got a question to ask you, but before I ask you that question, I got another question I gotta ask you first. What's your question? Well, I know you got all them lawnmowers lined up out there. Y'all fix lawnmowers here? No, this is a pizza place. We make pizza. Oh, pizza place, huh? I thought this was a lawnmower shop. My buddy said it was a lawnmower shop. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're in the right place. Now, I just yanking your chain. Y yanking my chain? I ain't got no chain, dude. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. That's just, that's just the figure of speech. Oh. So, so you're having trouble with a mower? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, a buddy of mine looked at it, and uh, he, he tinkered with engine stuff. He's pretty good with them. He said uh, he think maybe that the carburetor is out of synchronization with the timing of the valves, something like that. Uh, he said that and spark module might need a little tightening up. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, my buddy said he thinks the carburetor is out of synchronization. Oh, oh, oh. oh. You got a lawnmower that won't start? Yeah, that's right. My buddy said it won't hit a lick. And you want to drop it off? No! It's at my buddy's house. Now, my buddy did say y'all do pick up and deliver. Yeah, I can have my son Junior come down and pick it up. Oh, okay, great. I'll call my buddy let him know y'all coming. Uh, is, is there a charge on that? Uh, yes, it's $50 round trip. 50 bucks? All right, well, I got a buddy who's got a trailer, so maybe I can get it down here. Is this the same buddy? No, it's a different buddy. Look, dude, I got a lot of buddies. I'm a, a well-connected man. Now, uh, what do you think's wrong with it? I don't know. I gotta wait till I get it in here. Oh, okay, all right, I got you, I got you. Yeah, I understand. Uh, well, well, like I said, my buddy seems to think it's something with the valves and the carburetor out of timing, something with the sparking module, I don't know. Well, if your buddy knows so much, why don't you just have your buddy fix it? He tried. He couldn't figure it out. That's why I said to bring it down here to you. Okay, let me fill out a work order on this mower. What name are we putting it under? Uh, just put it under Buddy. Uh, your name is Buddy? Well, it's not my birth name. That's just what my buddies call me. Hey, that no hair. And today's how-to video is going to be on this here Dixie Chopper. And I'm going to show you what the problem is if it won't drive. The wheels won't drive. And the problem usually is this here T-Box, they call it. You know why they call it T-Box? It's in the shape of a letter T. So how this works is this sits inside between the two pumps, the hydraulic pumps, drive pumps, there's a big pulley on the bottom. Motor spins that pulley, spins these shafts, which spin the shafts on the hydraulic pumps. And that's what drives the wheel. So what happens is, there's gear lube in here and the gear lube leaks out. And then the gear starts grinding. So if you got one of these that's making a grinding noise and it won't drive, it's this here T-Box and I'm gonna show you how to replace it. Okay, what you're gonna to need to know about this T-Box is this isn't a Dixie Chopper part. This is made by Peerless. So you may be able to sort this part from Peerless. If not, you may have to get it through Dixie Chopper, but be aware of one thing. It's a spline drive, and they do make different number of splines. So you don't wanna order the wrong box. So make sure you order the right T-Box when you're looking this thing up, because you may get one that's got the wrong splines and then your pump isn't gonna fit in there. It looks exactly the same as this, it's just the shaft in the side of the middle is different. So be aware of that when you're trying to source one of these T-boxes. Now let's continue. See, they got a sticker on there that tells you check oil in gearbox every 50 hours. But you know what, nobody does that. Now this one's got a fan on top. Some do on the Dixie Chopper, some don't. So the first thing you're gonna do is loosen these nuts with a half inch wrench, and then get the fan out of the way, the electric fan, and then there's the T-Box, see, it's right in there. And then take these four screws off. This is what you're supposed to do to check the fluid in it. And then you take the cover off, and look. No lube 
Look at them teeth. Them teeth are worse than my teeth. They're all ground off. There ain't a drop of lube in there because the guy never checked it like the sticker said. So that just cost him a bunch of money. Now another thing you need to know because this happens with the do-it-yourselfer. He gets the tea box. He puts the tea box in and he puts it in with the gear. See this gear? He puts it in with the gear on this side. And you know what happens if you get this tea box 180 degrees in the wrong direction? If this gear is over here on this side, it'll spin the pumps backwards and it won't drive. So you'll go through all that work, putting the tea box in, you'll get all done, you'll fire it up and you'll go, this stupid thing still don't drive. Yeah, because you got the box in backwards. I've seen that before. So, when you put the new tea box in, because you got to fill it with oil anyway, make sure you install it with the gear going the right way. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad day. So if I was to install this gear box like this, with this gear on this side, it's going to spin the pumps backwards and it ain't going to drive. So make sure when you install it, it's on the right side, okay? So we're going to start with 9 16 wrench, and we're going to take these nuts off. There's four, one here, one here, one here, and one there. We're going to take them off first and get these pumps moved out of the way. Then we're going to have to go underneath because there's a pulley on here. And it's an inch and an eighth socket that takes off the nut so we can get the pulley off. And then we'll undo these two bolts, one on each side, so we can take the gear, gear box or tee box out. And then we're going to drop the new tee box in. So let's get started. Okay, I'm on the last nut. I use the 9 16 ratchet wrench, works really well for getting in there. And then, you know, they got a flat washer on there with the nut. Now we should be able to move these pumps out of the way. Let me get this cover out of the way here a little bit. Should be able to wiggle these out. There we go. A little brute strength there. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. It's going to wiggle this out of the way. Another thing that'll help in removing these pumps is to take this rod off here. And you just simply pull the quick pin from underneath. You might want to spray a little lubricant on there. And then I'm going to use a pair of side cutters to kind of get underneath the head of this pin. And then that way, you can swing that out of the way. And then, you know, because you're going to have to fight these hoses, see? And that'll give you a little more room to get that out. So you might want to take those arms off, too, on each side. All right, now I'm going to go underneath and remove that pulley. Okay, we got to take this belt off that's hooked to the tee box. That's that belt up here. So what you got to do is you got to loosen the four engine mounting bolts. And in this case, on this model, they look to be half inch. I don't know, other Dixie choppers might be different. There's two up front, two back here. Then we got to loosen this half inch bolt. This is a, an adjuster. This is what pulls on the motor to make the belt tight so you can put belt tension on it. So this is a three quarter wrench and then we're going to use a three-quarter socket. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen the four engine bolts and then we're going to loosen this. We're going to pull this bolt back so we could slide it forward to get the belt off. So just loosen that. Just crack it loose. You want to give that enough Ten, you know, take enough tension off so it'll slide. Now I'm just going to squeeze the belt to move the engine forward so it'll give me enough play. See how the motor's moving? 
and that'll give me enough slack. There it goes. All right. Now I can get the belt off. And then we're going to take that fully off. Let me get that out of my way. Now, look. I can already tell this is on upside down, this pulley. That hub is supposed to be up. Look, it's not even in line. Somebody's been under here before. It's not even in line with this. I'm surprised this belt didn't fall off. And you're going to need an impact to get that off. Because that shaft's going to turn on you. And then here's the socket. Inch and an eighth socket and another thing lower the deck down as low as it'll go so you can get the impact in there it'll give you enough room and it should slide off if not you'll have to use my air hammer trick to get the pulley off put the air hammer on the end of the shaft with a point and brrr, and then drop it off but this one came off yeah see this pulley they had it on like this it needs to go on like this yeah, see, now the pulley's in line with this. So somebody's been in here once before. Now, since you're under here, we got these three eight bolts that hold the T-box to the frame of the tractor. Now, it's a lot easier to take them off now. So 916 socket, you can get under here and brrr, zip these two nuts off because they're easier to get to under here than from the top. Then we'll go up top and uh, finish taking this tee box out. Okay, now we're ready to take out the tee for Terrell box. So we're gonna have to pull these pumps out of the way and it should come out past these hoses. We shouldn't have to mess with these hoses. You just gotta give it some wiggling. Gotta work on it, there we go, here we go. Woo, Terrell box coming out. Now look. All kind of crud and stuff in there. This bearing done went out. Because I had no lubricant. So now we got to take this on the bench. So we can transfer these parts to the new tea box. Or as I like to call it, Carol box. Hey. Hey, I got something I want to show you. See my new socks? Haha, <laughs> look, we got a guy on there. Cutting grass with a lawnmower, and look, he's killing it. Like them socks, don't you? Them are funny. All right, enough with the socks. Seven sixteenths. You gotta zip these off. Take this off right here. Probably gonna have to give a little tap. A little tippy tap. There we go. Little tippy tap. And then you can take these studs out. Don't mess with them nuts. And then we gotta take this cover off. Because you're not gonna use that cover. But we're going to want that gasket, so be careful. Don't wreck the gasket. I've got to clean this up, too. Now, I wonder why they don't have any kind of seal in there. That's where all that oil goes. I guess that O-ring, there's an O-ring on that pump. I guess that O-ring is supposed to keep the oil in there. Probably be better to put a seal in there, knuckleheads. Clean all that nastiness out of there. Now a lot of you always ask me on the inner screen, Carol, should I use gasket sealer on this and that? Well, you know what, in this case, I'm gonna use some gasket sealer and I like this high tack it's in a spray can and it's sticky so it's 
spray it on both sides of the gasket and then it gets sticky and tacky. This stuff works good. So in this case, on these, because I think that some of that gear oil leaked past these flanges, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this high tack on there. And I gotta let it sit a little while, let it tack up, and then put it on. So always read, read the directions, if you can read. Okay, now before you tighten this flange down, we're gonna go back to these rods. And we're gonna back these off, these nuts. Because I don't know how, how accurately they machine this. And we don't wanna pinch it and possibly break something or... So we wanna give us a little play here. Now I can tighten, tighten these down and then we'll go back and snug them nuts up. Okay, both flanges are tight. Now we can back this back to where it was. We can tell because it's dirty. Same with this one. And then we'll just snug them a little bit with the wrench. Okay, now we gotta take this here wood drift key. And I like to use a pair of side cutters if I can, and it ain't working. Sometimes it works. All right, I gotta get a punch. There we go. Now I have to clean that up a little bit since I boogered it up, so I make sure the pulley will slide over it. Or you can put a new one in there. All right, I cleaned it up with a file. Now you wanna support the shaft and tap it in. And then I'm going to try the pulley on there because I know I ain't going to be laying underneath there wrestling, uh, uh, wrestling with this pulley under there. Find out it don't fit. All right, good. So we pre-fitted. It works good. Okay, now we'll just drop the bolts in. And we'll go drop it back in Dixie yeah. Chopper. Okay, before you reassemble this, since that bearings and stuff went out, there was a bunch of crap in here. So make sure you clean it out. I took brake cleaner and sprayed brake cleaner and compressed air and cleaned this all out nice and clean. Now it's nice and pretty. Now you want to get these pumps far enough away. And remember, the gear... We want the gear on this side. And somebody put gear side on there and that wasn't me. So this must have been uh, replaced before. And I can tell that ain't me because that ain't my handwriting. I got nice handwriting. Because I used to copy off girls in school. That's how you know people that's got the nicest handwriting. They used to sit next to girls. Copy off them. All right, well, we got it in there. So now we gotta go underneath, put the nuts on, put the pulley on, then we'll come back up top and snake them pumps back in. Okay, now we got the pulley. Remember the pulley was on upside down before. So we want to hub up this thick hub part. Remember we pre-fitted on the bench so we know it's gonna slide on there. And then, gotta kind of hold it and then get the nut and the washer. Make sure we got our impact set to tighten and then tighten it up. All right, then we can go ahead and put our belt on. Now we can just go in the back here and tighten it up with that jack nut. Okay, now we're ready to tighten this up. Three quarter socket. And then check the tension on the belt. 
you kind of know where it was because we only loosened that a little bit. So you want to get it close to that nut. Okay, that's good. Now tighten that jam nut. Belt feels nice and good. All right, now I just got to tighten up the engine bolt. Okay, now we're going to put the pumps, tie the pumps into the T-box. And what you might have to do is crawl under there with a socket wrench and put this socket on that nut, that pulley nut. And you may have to turn that pulley a little bit to get the gears to move so the splines will mesh. And then also put a little bit of oil on those O-rings. So once you get that to mesh, slide the pumps on, then go ahead and put your washers and nuts back on, tighten it down, do it on both sides, and then we're going to fill it with gear oil and put the cover back on, put the fan back on, then we're going to test it. Okay, got the pumps tightened to the T-box. Now we're going to fill it with 80-90 weight gear oil, that's what it says to fill it with. Then we're going to fill it to the top of this cross shaft, because that's what the sticker tells you to do. Now the oil is going to leak through the bearings into these flanges here that had the O-rings on it for the pump and it's going to fill that up. So you may have to fill it and wait a few minutes for it to, to leak through the bearings and fill up those cavities. And then you may have to put a little bit more in there. Now you might want to take an air blower and blow the box out just in case some dirt or something fell in there while you were doing this repair. So they want you to fill it to the, to the cross shaft here. And then I'm going to use the old cover over again. I'm not going to use the new one from the box. The only thing I'm going to use new is the gasket that came with the new tea box. But this cover's got the fitting in it and it's got the pipe plug, so no use in transferring that over. Just use the old one over. Just clean it. This one had a bunch of dirt on it and little metal shavings. So I cleaned it real good. So let that set a few minutes. Go take a break. Get a pop or a beer or something. Drink some water. I don't care. Then come back and check it. And if it's low, fill it up again. The gear oil settled out now, and I got it right where I want it, top of the shaft. And then I sprayed some of that high tack on that cork gasket to seal it. So now we can put the cover back on and put the screws in. And another thing, don't forget to hook these rods back up. Remember I disconnected them? Put your pins back in. And I know another thing that's going to happen. Because that sticker says... Use Lucas 8090 weight, and you're going to be contacting me. Terrell, sticker says you use Lucas 8090 weight. Yeah, that's because Dixie Chopper got some kind of deal with Lucas. Just put some 8090 weight gear oil in there, whatever you can find. It'll work. It's the same. It all comes out of the ground. All goes back in the ground. All right, so now we just got to put the fan back on, tighten them bolts, and then we're going to fire it up and uh, drive it around a little bit. World's fastest lawnmower used to be. Ain't the world's fastest anymore. There's faster ones now. Hello, buddy? Uh, yeah, this is Buddy. Who's this? This is Terrell from Grass Rats Garage. Oh, the mower shop. Oh, hey, what's up, buddy? Nothing, buddy. Hey, just calling to let you know your mower's ready. Oh, oh, that's great. All right, well, I, I can't get it right now. I'm way out at a buddy's house, but uh, maybe I can call another buddy and see if he can come pick it up. Whatever. I'm just calling to let you know it's ready, so you can just pick it up whenever. Okay, buddy? 
All right, all right, thanks, buddy. I'll send the buddy down. All right, take care. All right, all right, bye. Buddy. Oh, slippers. What are you doing here? I'm here to get John's mower. John? I got no mower here under John. What? My buddy John? Called him, says mower's ready? Oh, you mean buddy. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs>